the first thing we do when we are looking at a time series is we like to plot linear time on the x-axis and the response variable on the y-axis. We can do this in jump by using the graph builder and in this particular data set we have our time is in this time index and that's going to be on our x-axis and then our sales is our y-axis so we'll bring this over here. We can get this to actually show us the line as it moves through time and this line has a fairly clear seasonal component to it. It also appears to have an upward sort of like slope that's kind of curvilinear. We can check the R squared uh, of the different forms of both linear equation and quadratic equation in jump by right clicking, select add, and then add line of fit. Now once the line of fit is there, then we can add the R squared. And it looks like right here with our linear line, you can see this pink line here, it's linear, that we have an R squared of 0 0.305. And then if we want to change this so that instead of a linear, we want to have the quadratic, we can. And you can see the curve and it increased the R squared a bit. It went from about 0.3 to 0.34. So that's pretty good evidence that we've got a curvilinear component and so that we should fit both a linear index of time, the one we have here, and then also the quadratic one, the squared version of time, which we do have. And so this gives us a pretty good sort of visual display of what we're dealing with. We've already prepared the data and I have videos where I went through the preparing of the data. I want to just move forward to where we're dealing with setting up the data partitions. I already have the future periods of time. We have the dummy variables, the time indexes. Here's linear time and here's quadratic time. And so I have all the inputs necessary. We just have not yet predicted the forecast values for sales for these future periods. I also in jump went in and use the hide exclude to turn these off. I don't want these to be considered while it's trying to figure out what terms should go in the model. In other words, while it's trying to figure out which predictors are the best set of predictors in the model. So I'm just going to, I've turned this off with hide and exclude so it's just sitting out there and it's not going to be interacting with us until we want to predict these values they are going to go right here. So now that that's done, we need to partition the data. What we're going to use is we're going to use records 21 through 24 as validation and records 1 through 20 as the training data. The way we do this in terms of setting up the partition is under predictive modeling we go down to make validation column. What we need to do here is we need to be able to figure out what proportion of the records we want to have in here. And the way we can do that is I just took the 20 and 4 to figure out out of 24 what proportion are 20 and that's going to be our training set. So I'm going to put that in here as 0.833 and then the balance is going to be this 0.166 and we're not going to have a test set so now we've set this up then we can select cut point and it says where's your time and so that's the defining for our sequence of time. It says the training set is going to begin with 1 and the validation set begins with 21, which is exactly what we wanted. So I'm going to go ahead and select OK. Now if we go and look at this, then we have our training records going down to 20 and our validation records down here. So we've succeeded at partitioning our data. Now what we want to do is we want to figure out what terms are we going to put in our model. We're not going to put in year and quarter because these are redundant with this information that we've already we used this information to create this time index. And if we were to put these things and this in together, it would confuse our model because there's a lot of redundant information in there. There's going to be a lot of collinearity. And if we have this, we don't need these. Let's go ahead and fit a model. So we're going to analyze fit model. And so we're going to take our Y variable and put it up here. And we're going to take our validation and put it down here. And then the values that we have that we want to put in is we want to put in our time, our quadratic or squared version of time. 
We need to uh, also put in our dummy variable that has the quarters because we could clearly see when we were looking at seasonality that some of the quarters went up regularly and some of the quarters went down regularly. So we're going to put in our time. We'll add that, our time squared, and then we'll put in our quarters that are made textual variable. And so now we can run this model. Here are the results of the model. You can see that each of our input variables was statistically significant. It's actually helping with the contribution. Our residuals actually are reasonably sort of scattered across, so those look fine. It just helps us know there's not some big systematic bias that we are not accounting for in our model. If you look at the summary of fit, we have our R squared and our adjusted R squared based on the 20 observations that was in our training data. And at the bottom here, we also have the, the cross-validation. In the cross-validation, it's showing us our R squared for our training set and our R squared for our validation set. It also shows us what it calls RASE. Jump, when it does root mean squared error, it inflates this for the degrees of freedom. That's not something that we normally do. Statisticians do that, but data mining people don't typically do that. So what Jump is using is they're using, they call it root absolute squared error, and it really is what we've been referring to as root mean squared error. There's no adjustments and inflations in here for the degrees of freedom. So this is our essentially the same thing as our training root mean squared error, and then this is our validation set root mean squared error. Not surprisingly, this is quite a bit bigger, and so what's happening here is it's not really showing up so much here. It's, there's a bit of reduction, but it's showing up very much right here in terms of some of the overfitting that we're not getting as good an estimate when we're out doing our, our validation data. So that is how we would evaluate this. Again, all of our effects are statistically significant. We also have our parameter estimates here. We have our intercept, we have linear time, we have the coefficient for quadratic time, and then we also have the dummy variable values for the first through the third quarter, which means that the fourth quarter is buried inside this intercept as well.